Hello and welcome to the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championship. It's the top 16 superstars, it is the North America region and it is the Manufacturer Series that is our focus for this event. My name is Tom Brooks, alongside me Jimmy Broadbent. We're here to guide you through the action here this afternoon and it's going to be a very, very exciting one. Jimmy, we know how exciting the Manufacturer Series can be. Lots of different uh, marks competing against one another. A variety of different talents up and down the grid as well. It should be an absolute crack at this. Yep, different cars, different strengths, different weaknesses. Always makes the good racing. I'm sure we will see exactly the same today. Absolutely right. Well, here are the championship standings for the different manufacturers and drivers going into this event after seven rounds that we've had of the top 16 superstars so far. You can see Turismo Defsun, he is leading the way by uh, a good margin of nearly 300 points over FT Ant there in second position. You can see Turismo Defsun in the Lexus, FT Ant there in the Chevrolet. Then you've got Carl Lamb in the Alfa Romeo. He is in third position, closely followed actually by TRC Stagger in the BMW and Turismo Windfire in the Hyundai. So very close actually there in the midfield there. Actually tied on points I should say between fourth and fifth position. TRC Stagger versus Turismo Windfire there, Jimmy. So that is very close indeed. Doesn't get much closer than that. No, I mean it just goes to show you just how... Uh how competitive it is right at the top of these uh, of this field here in the North America region. Here is 9 to 16 for everyone here still within a chance of going through, of course, to the farms with their manufacturer. If they are the fastest in their manufacturer, you might notice uh, some people taking the same uh, same mark. AMS DC, of course, from Force 1, both being Peugeot drivers. But at this point, AMS will be the one that progresses, not Force 1. And Hendrix 323 in the Toyota rounds off our top 16. And uh, I think now we'll go to uh, our circuit, uh, a very fun, flowing circuit. One of my personal favourites, Tom. Yeah, the Mount Panorama Motor Racing Circuit, 6.2 kilometres, known to you and me as the Bathurst Circuit. As you can see, 23 corners in total, and it is a fearsome track, this one, isn't it? Lots of undulation, lots of tight and twisty corners, two very long straights as well, lots of great overtaking opportunities. There's nothing this circuit doesn't have. It's kind of half street circuit, half traditional race circuit. You're down the bottom, you think, oh, this is okay, I can deal with this. Then you get up to the cut, you think, oh, what am I in for now? <laughs> and then uh, you pretty much uh, hold on to the side of your, <laughs> hold on to your car until you get right down to the bottom of the forest elbow where you get a bit of a respite. But uh, really interesting track, very tricky to overtake over the top, so a big challenge for our drivers. Yep, certainly is. Well, qualifying then about to get underway for the uh, top 16 superstars in the Manufacturer Series. Who is going to line up where? We cross over to the on-track action. We're looking here at Mr. Stinky Bug. He is in the Jaguar F-Type machine. These are Group 3 cars, by the way, if this is your first time joining us in the top 16 superstars. And uh, the top 16 superstars uh, Manufacturer Series, of course, with these Group 3 machines. Very close racing, first of all. These Group 3 cars based on production road cars but have been heavily modified with lots of aerodynamic parts, wider wheel arches, bigger tyres, that sort of thing. And it does make it very, very exciting, not only to watch, but the racing is very close as well. Down towards the chicane we go in this final part of the lap and it's a very opportune passing place they're going into the chase then the chicane that follows there jimmy if you can line it up through the chase and then hold that move into that chicane it uh, can prove to be very beneficial indeed yeah, what about getting the slipstream down then i think the sinky bug here is going to be setting his first flying lap let's see if he what he does when he crosses the timing line he does a 202.4 so not a bad first lap to put down then hendrix comes across in the toyota and then originals comes for the, the provisional pole to 1.8, Sam with a 203.3 behind him. Here's Tresmo Death Sun. Uh, he uh, he goes fastest for the 201.5 in that Lexus. So good to see a Lexus, our manufacturer's temperature from last year, doing so well here in the Americas region. Here comes Outlaw Quadrant. He doesn't do too well. 203.5 uh, with Orange Crusher 204. Time's coming in thick and fast now. Marzan with a 202.5 and AMS TC up to sixth position with a 203.1. Yeah, plenty of time for things to improve, though. However, what we will see and what we have seen so far is the Aston Martin comes over the line. That is in the form of Lightning DF22B1. We'll just call him Lightning to you and me because that's a bit of a mouthful there otherwise. But uh, what you will see is drivers trying to burn off fuel, really, in the early stages of this session before they set their first competitive lap times because these cars are very, very heavy, 100 uh, litres worth of fuel on board. They're going to want to get those cars as light as possible. The lighter the car is, of course, the more responsive it is and the easier it is to drive it around, and therefore, in theory, the faster lap time you will be able to set. 
So let's see what will happen. We'll probably see drivers setting these banker lap times early on. Then they'll do quite a few slow cool down laps. They'll put a new set of boots on, do an out lap, not take any fuel on board and then go for their final flying lap or laps potentially depending on how they decide to run in this qualifying session. I'm trying to think of what car I'd like to have around here to be honest. Um, uh, I wouldn't really fancy a mid-engine car around here or anywhere really just so they're, they're quite oversteered. They require a, a decent driver to make them go fast. I think I'd probably end up in the Corvette or something like that. Same as FT Ant. Uh, interesting fact, FT Ant, uh, you know, he's been in the World Finals and um, of course the regional finals uh, before that. Very big Jeff Gordon fan, very big Chevy fans, not really surprised to see him driving the call there. No, absolutely not. Lots of different uh, manufacturers you can see here. Lexus, of course, our manufacturer series champions of the 2018 season. Will they be able to repeat that in 2019? Well, Turismo Defsun doing them uh, a good job so far, leading the championship going into this event and fastest comfortably in this session by a good couple of tenths of a second. You can see here originals then into the pit lane, new set of boots on his car. Very crucial, of course, to make sure you've got uh, the right amount of uh, rubber and you can get the best lap times possible for these drivers. Yep, all about making sure that your tyres are fresh and you're burning off that fuel when you can. Uh, Mount Panorama, uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's very much a circuit that benefits confident drivers. If you can uh, feel uh, at one with the car and throw it at the wall knowing you'll get close but not touch it, you're very likely to gain more time over those who may be a little bit more meek over the top of the hill. You'll see Originals here with the car behind on the flying, that must outlaw quadrants. Originals will hopefully slow up a little bit, he does so, let's outlaw Quadra get on with his flying lap in the Subaru. I've not seen much of Subaru, I must say, uh, recently in the Manufacturer Series. I'm interested to see what Outlaw can do in that car. He's currently down to 11th, so it's not looking too good for that uh, uh, for the, the Japanese Manufacturer, but uh, we'll have to see if he can improve that from here. Now, a uh, couple of Porsches in this race as well. Um, we've, seen, we've seen Porsche be strong in other regions, so we'll see if the America's drivers have as much bump in. Meanwhile, here's AMS Marzan in the AMG GT3. I think one of the staples of modern GT3 racing, Tom, that. Yeah, absolutely right, Jimmy, as you say. It's been around for uh, quite a while there. That's um, Mercedes and very, very popular, not only in the sim racing community, but in the real world of racing there as well. You can see just how tight it is, really, in this section as the drivers climb all over the mountain, how close to the wall they have to get in order to extract the maximum out of the car. AMS Marzan here on very much a slow cool down lap, but there's quite a congregation really of cars in this sort of sector there, Jimmy. And of course, next time around, they're going to be trying to go as fast as possible. And that could prove to be a little bit interesting. Bit of traffic maybe holding them up. Let's see what happens. But uh, it could get a little bit nasty going through there. Well, the secret agent man there, or <laughs> lightning in the, uh, I'll say British racing green, British luminous green. I'm not really sure what that is. Lightning's got the car. I mean, we know it's his car. I mean, that's always a good thing when you're sitting up here in the commentary booth. But uh, I think maybe he closed his eyes when he was designing that. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a distinctive livery, as you say there. The chrome glinting in the sun, chrome bumpers, chrome wheels, chrome bodywork, uh. chrome spoilers, <laughs> chrome everything. He's probably got a chrome oh. crash out in the car. And speaking of crashing as well, there's Bill Barder, who's got into the wall, coming out of the forest elbow. Nearly gave Bill Barder the chrome horn there, which is uh, <laughs> luckily he ghosted out the way, and uh, that wasn't an issue. But anyway... In the background, there's uh, someone going off road. Trisman Bill Wilder Lester. again, doing yeah. a rally crossing. I think he's, I think he's not, not happy around there, is he? But that was, um, who was that going through? I just, I've lost it in my head now. We've got someone going through for a flying lap. So we'll keep an eye on, it was Theresa Lester, sorry. We'll keep an eye on the, the lap times and just see what he can do now. He doesn't look like he's on a flyer the way he's attacking this course in that Porsche 911 RSR coming around now. The penultimate corner. Yellow flags are being waved, so someone's made a mistake somewhere. There it is. There's a car slow or stopped actually on the pit entry. Not sure what's happened there. I think they're trying to burn off fuel. That's a very interesting strategy. I'm not sure why that's being allowed, but we won't get into that. Leicester comes across the start finish line. Will he improve his time? No, he won't because he's on an outlap. Well done, Jimmy. There you go. <laughs> Look at the timing, Jimmy. Yeah, Turismo Leicester then on an outlap. This will be a flying lap and it will be a crucial flying lap because it will be his last one there as well. He's currently 10th quickest in this session is Turismo Leicester, the number one on his car. He is certainly not number one in this qualifying session so far. It is Turismo Defsun who is leading the way so far. Here is Turismo Defsun in the Lexus. Very different car, of course, to that 911 RSR front engine rear wheel drive as opposed to the rear engine rear wheel Ooh. drive and kissing the wall there for Turismo Defsun. He's trying to extract the maximum amount of performance out of his car and perhaps just pushing a little bit too far beyond the limit. 
you have to just believe over the top of the mountain that it's going to stick. It's very scary driving the car at the wall, but uh, if anyone can do it, it's Def Sun, one of the fastest drivers in the North America's region. I think that'll be fair to say as we now come down to Forest Elbow for his last qualifying lap. You break just before the road falls away from you. Look how tight he is on the inside. It's a perfect line through there, but he's a little bit too enthusiastic on the front and next. It gets it sideways. I think just a touch of the wall. That would have slowed him down. And now he'll, ca he'll carry that mistake all the way down the straight. So probably lose a bit of time down here. And meanwhile, here is Stinky Bug in that Jag. Well, I think that's a Chick-fil-A Jaguar, which is a very interesting livery. <laughs> I mean, these Americas guys have some great liveries. We'll give them that at least. Coming across the line now, will he improve? 202.4 is his best time so far. Comes across the line and he does improve very slightly, but not enough to move him up the order at all. Will originals go any faster? He does a 201.420. Can Def Sun take that back? He's actually currently down. One tenth down. Comes across the line now. What's it going to be for Def Sun? It is a 201.37. He does go fast and nips it in the last sector. That was incredible there from Turismo Def Sun. I don't think either of us thought he was going to do that. He was a tenth of a second down in that final sector coming into it by being able to turn that deficit round, not only turn it round, but also pick up a couple of tenths of a second is incredible. FT and there goes into third position right at the end of that session. So very impressive stuff there from the Corvette driver. The C7 Group 3 starts on the head of the second row of the grid, but a very exciting session. A few lap times being improved upon at the end of that session there as well. The upshot is that this man here, Turismo Defsun, absolutely dominant performance from the Canadian driver. He will start from pole position ahead of the racing action. Very, very impressive stuff indeed. There Originals 14 alongside him in the BMW as well. There we are looking at Originals and then third place of FT and very impressive stuff as we say indeed. There is Mr. Stinky Bug in fourth place. He'll start from the second row of the grid. AMS Marzan there inside your top five. There are your finishing results after that qualifying session. We've already disguised you through the first three rows. Turismo Windfire, a bit of a quiet session for him in the Hyundai Genesis, and lining up alongside him we'll have uh, Lightning DF, and then alongside him will be AMS DC in the Peugeot RCZ Group 3. So a quiet session for a few drivers there, Jimmy, but exciting nonetheless. Yeah, uh, uh, a session to forget, though, for Bill Badder at the bottom there. Five seconds off the pace and 2.1 seconds off... Uh, off 15 positions, so not a good session for him at all. No, very disappointing. Turismo Leicester there as well. He'll be sick as a parrot after that one. Down in 11th place for the Canadian driver. Work to do for him come race day. Speaking of racing then as well, let's have a look at the strategy going into this one and the race details as well. Racing medium and hard tyres for the drivers. Of course, we know they're in Group 3 machinery. We're going to have nine laps for them to compete with. That'll be just under 60 kilometres to you and me. And uh, fuel consumption at times two. Fuel and uh, tyre wear Tyre there, you can see at times 14 as well, Jimmy. So uh, managing to hold on to those tyres to the end of the race is going to be quite an interesting feat. That's right. And here is the uh, tyre strategy as we think it will play out. Of course, a racing medium tyre there, as you can see, good for about five laps before they start to go off. The racing hard being capable of doing the entirety of the nine laps of the race. About 1.1 seconds difference between the medium and the racing hard tyre. So being on the medium tyre for as long as possible while, it w while it's working anyway will be a good strategy. However though, if you do have to pit, it's 12 seconds plus the stop time, which can be about two seconds. So about 14 seconds lost during the pit stop if you do, do uh, want to change your tyres. Yeah, absolutely right. So then let's get ready, shall we, to go into the race. Racing action about to get underway for the Manufacturer's Series for the North America's region of the top 16 superstars. So then the drivers lined up on the grid, ready to get this nine-lap race underway for the Manufacturer Series, the North America's region. Turismo Defsun in the Lexus leads the field round and over the timing line for the first time of asking. It is lights out then and away we go here at Mount Panorama. The Manufacturer Series race is underway down towards Hell Corner for the first time. Turismo Defsun holds on to the lead, but Originals 14 in the BMW already looking very racy indeed. Is anybody going to think about a move? What is the slipstream? going to be like coming down this mountain straight for the first time of asking Turismo Defsun there still holds on to the lead everybody keeping it relatively clean further back as well no big moves being made up and down the order but it is still Turismo Defsun the lead but FTN there Jimmy in third position getting pretty close to Originals 14 there in second that Corvette's got a bit of grunt for straight line managed to close the gap to the M6 in front but now we're coming uh, up to the cutting 
And this is where we see what the cars are like over the top of the mountain. The originals there, all sorts of sideways there as well the hill. This is flat when the car's a little bit lighter. A little bit of a lift there from FD and she actually scrapes the wall. That's going to slow him down coming over the top. Luckily for him, very hard to overtake over this section. So just try and keep it neat and tidy and you'll be fine. Now just something that I've noticed very quickly, Tom, for the rest of the way. We only have one hard runner and that is the number... Uh, currently position 13 driver of Hendrix in the Toyota. He's opted to start on the hard compound of tyres, so probably a no stop from him. We'll see how that pays off as the race progresses. Meanwhile, the battle hotting up for fourth position as AOZ Marzan gets very close to the back of the Jaguar of Stinky Bug. Let's see what that AMG has in a straight line. Yep, AMG versus Jaguar F type. You can see the gap already being very pronounced there from fifth back to sixth position. Turismo uh, wind force there, uh, wind fire rather, I should say, in uh, sixth position in the Hyundai Genesis Group 3, already beginning to drop back and already beginning to close up and literally think about making a move into the penultimate couple of corners is Originals 14. Very close indeed is the BMW driver now down in towards the final couple of corners on this lap into the left-hander, then into the final corner of Murray's. No moves being made so far, but Originals 14 is able to close right up onto the back, going through Hell Corner and onto the straight. That is where this move could be made. He's put himself in a good position here, Tom. He's right up behind the rear spoiler of Turismo Death Zone. How close is he coming out of Hell Corner? He has got a little bit of a run. He is now starting to gain, and now here's the, here's the rather bit sweet and sour looking car here, this Chrome Aston Martin. Bit of a cork in the bottle here. It's got 7th, 8th and 9th tucked up behind it, coming up now towards Quarry Corner, over the crest here on the mountain straight as we begin our climb once more let's see how he is on the braking very neat and tight you want to just very easily get back on the throttle and that's it's so easy to get onto that curb but you see one of the cars background a uh, wind fire actually uh, tagging the, uh, the the barrier there with the rear end of his Hyundai Genesis that's going to leave a little bit, bit of a mark and I guess that's keeping the paint guy in business anyway yeah it certainly is well it's getting very close and you can see this mid-race gap being very very pronounced indeed a little bit of a trip into the barrier there for AMS Mars and Mr Stinky Bug on the defensive you can see the white and pink livery car the Jaguar F-Type having to try and hold that line it's very much one at a time coming through this mountain section but uh, on to the Comrod straight as they'll be going off of the forest elbow that could be an opportune overtaking opportunity if AMS Marzan can put his car in the right place he goes a little bit wide though that is going to compromise his run and it just allows Mr Stinky Bug in front to try and pull out a couple more car lengths and keep himself a little bit safer for a wee while longer on to this straight we go once again Looks like FT and in the Corvette is starting to fall back a little bit from the guys at the top of the field. Here they are, Richards again has that slip from that M6, very fast wow. drive, goes to the outside, rather chases up the inside for the left-hander. That's what you want to do, he's trying to keep Defson on the outside, Defson trying to run it around the long way, and he keeps it there. What a defence there from Defson. Absolutely brilliant stuff, down in towards the final couple of corners we go, we now cross over to AMS Marzan, who has got the better of Mr Stinky Bug, so it is now AMG Mercedes ahead of Jaguar F type but it's the battle at the front that I want to take a look at because that is still very close indeed down towards hell corner we go lap three out of nine here at Bathurst no moves being made there by Originals 14 who we cross on board with now I tell you what Turismo Def son he's had his banana pancakes or whatever it is they eat for breakfast over in Canada because he is doing an absolutely brilliant job of defending that position so far over the hill we go up in towards the mountain section where do they pick the breaking point do they manage to hold on? Yes, they do. Turismo Death Sun there. This is what he's really good at as well, is it's just holding that line, not spooking himself into missing an apex, running a bit wide through a corner, because you can guarantee that Originals 14, the American, will try and find his way past if a whisker of an opportunity comes about. It's refreshing to see someone be able to take the challenge of Death Sun. It's been very quick over both series. Uh, this season, so it's good to see someone actually uh, there racing with him and giving us a show, more importantly, I say very selfishly. Um, now we look back to sixth and seventh position as that glorious V12 Vantage, even when it's uh, chromed out like that. I still love the look of the thing. Um, here is Windfire behind in the Hyundai Genesis. Uh, again, not really much you can do over the mountain apart from following someone, which can be quite frustrating. You have to kind of pick and choose your moments at Bathurst, and you end up trying to set up the pass probably about half a lap earlier than you actually end up doing it. Let's see if Originals worked out this time. So again, uh, Def's on a little bit slow out of uh, the Forest Elbow, 
Let's see how fast this M6 is down the straight, because we've seen it a couple of times uh, get uh, onto the back of the Lexus by the time we get down to the chase. Look again, just reeling it in. You can see the speed there in the bottom right-hand corner. 171, 175 mile an hour coming through the chase. It's a bit far back for a lunge. Will he give it a go? No, he thinks better of it. But again, look how much closer he is now, Tom. That gap comes down for about seven tenths to just two. Yeah, Def Sun there missing the first apex of that left-hander in that chicane. That's really going to compromise his run down into Murray's. His original is going to think about anything. No, he holds firm. He holds station. He opts to try and get a better run. Coming out of the corner, and Turismo Def Sun there. A little bit wide, a little bit on the grass. Is that going to allow an opportunity to present itself for Originals 14? He won't do it into hell corner, and indeed he doesn't. But onto this straight, that is where he's got to think about making that move. He gets a good run out. We ride on board with Originals 14. Can he use the superior straight line speed of that BMW M6? Can Turismo Def Sun defend that position? He goes to the right hand side. He knows he's under attack, but pulling alongside his Originals 14. Can he launch a move as they come up in towards the right hander, which follows? No, he can't. Turismo Def Sun, again, a master class of defending. And we know it's very much one at a time coming into the cutting and in towards this mountain section of the lap. So he holds firm for at least another few more corners. And we aren't too far away now from what will probably be the pit window for the medium tyre. In races we've seen here previously, cars have come in around lap, end of lap four, end of lap five to bolt on a new set of medium tyres to go to the end with. Now, of course, this is going to be incredibly important for these two guys up here. Who's going to blink first? Do you follow the guy in? If you're originals, if I were originals, I'd try and follow Def Sun in if he came in this lap. Or I'd come in this lap myself and go for the undercut. It seems having a bit of a tough time getting by over the mountain, though. It also, I'd also wager that the reason why Originals is able to stay with Def Sun is because of his draft and that massive straight line speed of the BMW M6, which we're probably going to see here coming down Comrade Straight for the fourth time of asking. Yeah, down this Comrade Straight, as you can see, a little bit further back now is Originals, a good middle sector there for Turismo. Def Sun is just allowing him a little bit more breathing space, a little bit more time to think and just to pace himself a bit more. Originals 14, he's on the attack, but is he going to offer from perhaps a different strategy here? Maybe that's where it will come into play. He might be holding back a bit now just to see what Def Sun does. So um, Def Sun, I thought for a second there, missed the corner, but that's the connection that happens every now and then, such as the joy of online racing. Now, what does Def Sun do? Will he peel to the left-hand side? Will Originals do that? No, they both go around again. No, Def Sun does come in at the last moment. He, I think he was trying to fake out Originals, did that very well there. So important now, uh, Def Sun will have uh, essentially the undercut. He'll have a, a, a lap quicker or a lap more on this quicker tyre compound, whereas Originals is going to have to stay out a lap longer on the, the more worn time. We also have other cars coming in as well, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Originals needs a lap of his life now, really, to try and get that position back. He's going to have to pitch surely in the next lap or so, doing another lap on clapped out tyres. It's not the way to do things. It's not going to help anybody, least of all yourself. You can see all the other drivers pitting around him as well. The positions changing left, right and centre. The drivers who have pitted, of course, generally moving up and down the order. But Turismo Def Sun, despite having that pit stop, is now in fifth position after that as well. And the good thing is, crucially here, Jimmy, he's got clear track in front of him. He's got no traffic to hold him up. He's got nothing that is going to hold his charge. And he's going to hopefully have, in theory, a very clear outlap here. So if you're originals now, you have to be pushing as hard as possible. There is pretty much no chance you'll be able to match the pace of Def Sun if Def Sun gets up to speed quickly. Uh, but we also expect to see him in at the end of this lap. Now, of course, the pit stops happening means we do have uh, a couple of guys being promoted up the order somewhat. Here's one of them, Lightning, in the, um, Frank, terrible looking <laughs> after mine. I like the car, I dislike the, uh, the paint job, but he's a secret agent man, so you know, maybe it's some sort of ploy. It's working out fairly well, I guess. Well, it's secret if he's advertising on the back of his car. I think <laughs> an acquired taste is perhaps yeah, on the back of his chrome car. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Turismo, uh, that's, uh, who's that in front? That's Wind, uh, Windfire in front there, uh, who's been looking uh, fairly decent actually in this uh, in this high-end day. We've not seen much of my day in the manufacturer so far, so good to see it out and doing well at the moment now. From my past experience, that V12 Aston Martin, I know, is pretty quick in the straight lines. So will we see him be able to challenge the Hyundai coming in to uh, the chicane after the chase? Look how close it's getting now. Look at the speed of that thing up the inside. V12 power, oh. baby, he says. Willie, how is he on the brakes? Oh, he goes around the outside. Will he hold it? No, he's muscled out by Windfire and has to settle for fourth place for now. Oh, almost loses it on the kerb on the exit. Very close race indeed. Lightning goes into the pit lane then. He decides that that's enough. That's enough racing, enough battling. That would have been fun to probably continue onwards. It's probably better for his race point of view to go into the pit lane. Turismo Def Sun, though, meanwhile 
continues on and Originals hasn't pitted here crucially Jimmy as well last time around so a different strategy Originals is going for is he going to try and go for the whole race distance at the moment now he is six seven eight nine ten seconds almost ahead of the competition it's difficult to see really if the others are going to be able to get past here Jimmy isn't it yeah, of course his main competitor we're on board right now is Turismo Death Sun he's made a stop now this is interesting Tom because he's coming up behind Turismo Wind uh, Windfire who is his teammate of course but has not pitted as of yet and at the moment Death Sun needs to be going as quick as he can to try and cover off Originals and FT Ant who we believe are not going to stop so here we are then coming up the hill he's got nowhere to go here he's going to be stuck behind windfire all the way over the mountain which is a disaster really for death sun and this is crucial isn't it jimmy because this means his teammate could potentially cost him this race here couldn't it this is very very exciting indeed absolute drama we're riding on board we're riding on the outshot of it really as they come down in towards the forest elbow he lets him through there but it's very close indeed between them turismo windfire doing the decent thing for his teammate not holding him up too much and now the lexus driver is back through and back into third position yeah, i think maybe they're maybe sitting on a voice chat together and being like come on mate do us a favor let us throw i'm fighting for the win here windfire lets death sun go but the damage has already kind of been done he lost a little bit of time on that lap and we'll have to keep an eye on that as it develops but now that's death sun back up into third position he's now nine seconds off originals who is leading this race and six seconds off ft and so here is originals right now in that bmw m6 looking very strong at the moment he'll be coming on to the seventh flat when he comes across the line this time by it's going to be close, Tom. It's quite hard to call. I'm not sure if Death Sun's going to catch up. And if he does catch up, passing here, if you're not uh, on the straight, is very difficult. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing, as we said earlier on, Jimmy. That infield section, it's a one-man person through there. It's a one-man show. Trying to find your way past is going to be very, very limited. There's no way Originals can pit now. It's too late in the game for him. Look at the time difference, though, between the two. You can see the lap times just on the right-hand side of your screen. Originals there with a 2.05. Turismo, a 2.02. He is three seconds a lap faster than originals at the moment with only five seconds now separating them on the road this is getting pretty tasty with less than two laps remaining that's five seconds to ft and in front there uh, tom so he's got to get past that court the corvette driver first before moving up to the bmw driver now death sum we've seen how a good he is over the top here when he has no one in the way and that's what it is now it's very challenging when you're chasing someone you have to go right I had to hit every apex perfectly, especially using this tyre advantage. He'll know that he's got a fast car underneath him too. So it's all about, about not letting the pressure get to you and just being neat and tidy over the top of the mountain here. Tidy but assertive. You have to show those walls who's boss. Don't hit them though, because they'll show you who's boss. Yeah. As we now come down, uh, back down the mountain, underneath the gantry, and downhill. Now the, the road just falls away from you in front of you, and suddenly the brakes don't work as well as gravity works against you. Through the dipper there, and now back down towards Forest Elbow. He's pulled in two seconds on FT Ant in second position in the middle sector alone here, Jimmy. Has Turismo Def Sunday been right on board. This Lexus is hooked up and working nicely. A little bit of a slide out of the Forest Elbow, but onto the Conrad Street. That gap is coming down, 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 corner by corner. And surely it's only going to be a matter of time before he tries to plant a move on the Chevrolet. Next time around could be pretty crucial. I just don't know if he's going to have the time to catch up with Originals. We're going to have to keep an eye on the pace, keep an eye on the lap times between these drivers as they come down now into that chicane, riding on board with the Canadian, doing a great job, driving absolutely out of his skin. He wants this race victory. He's in a good opportunity to try and take this race victory. The race leader is in sight now. He's on old tyres. The driver who we're riding on board with, Turismo Defson, he's got newer rubber on his car. He's got a lot more grip and he's got a lot more pace to boot. All right, it seems at this stage that Death Sun is probably going to catch Ant coming over the mountain unless Ant is feeling uh, charitable, which he won't be, of course. They're all racing, but not a teammate now. He's got to overtake Ant on pace alone. He's not going to be given any freebies as we come up mountain straight once more up towards Quarry Corner. And essentially, yeah, he's a bit too far back. If he was a bit closer, he might be able to have made a pass into the cutting after being quick through quarries, but I don't think he's going to quite be close enough for that. And there is Death Sun. I say, look at the rate of knots. He's closing in on the back of FT and they're coming up to the cutting, but no, it's not going to quite be close enough. And he's now going to be stuck by hand uh, behind and all the way over the mountain. Or is he? Look how close he's already to the core. Is he going to go to the inside here? No. He is. He's going to fall. Oh, the move, contact, and Ant is shoveled 
into the wall. Death Sun, that was not a good move, my friend. And rightly so, he picks up a five-second penalty. He has just thrown that race away with one silly move. That was an absolute disaster for Turismo. Death Sun, he didn't need to do that. There was no reason for him doing that in any way, shape or form. You know, he had the time. He could have just made the move a little bit later on in the lap. Sure, it would have cost him a bit of time, but the pace advantage he had, he'd have been able to make that up. Now, he is going to be set to lose five seconds on the Conrod straight. He has just thrown this race away, as you quite rightly say there, Jimmy. So it is going to be originals then, who surely has now got this one in the bag. The time penalty comes into effect for Turismo Defson. Absolute disaster for the Canadian, and he's got nobody else to blame there but himself at all. And from bad to worse, he doesn't lose the position to Ant. He also loses the place to AMS Marzan, who's actually on the medium compound of the, the, the first of the uh, stoppers now. So he's up into second place, and he might have a chance of catching up originals. So saying that, it's six seconds now between second and first place, so it's probably not going to happen. FT Ant now on that battered call there. You can see the front there missing a little bit of paint probably a, a little bit scared after seeing uh, how Turismo Death's untreated in this time. Now coming round for one more lap. We're on the final lap now, ladies and gents. FT and I think will probably uh, have to yield to Death's Sun coming up the hill. I don't think he's got the tyres to defend, but Originals has effectively just been handed this win. They've been keeping together for one more lap. Well, let's keep an eye out, make sure that they can get a pass to one another in a clean way this time. You can see Turismo Death's Sun there. Easily got a pace advantage. I don't think FT Ant is going to try and defend it. It's the final podium position. It is Turismo Defson. He pulls alongside in the Lexus. Can he find a way through up into the right hander? Yep, he certainly can. A lot cleaner of an overtake this time. He's still pushing very hard indeed. He could be set to maybe get second position here, there, Jimmy, as well. Damage limitation to its extreme for Turismo Defson, but it's two seconds up the road. And Marzan as well has also made a pit stop, so he's yeah. going to be on relatively similar sort of rubber, so I just don't know whether maybe that will be possible either. I don't think it is. I think at this point, Death Sun is going to have to settle for that third position. It's going to take a mistake from Marzan or Originals uh, for him to drop back into the clutches of the chasing pair. Uh, right now, the gap is coming down pretty quick uh, from Marzan's two Originals to first and second place, but it's not going to be enough. Marzan now is making his way down towards Forest Elbow for the last time. Just looking at the mini-map on the right-hand side of your screen there. Now coming down Comrade straight. So all he's got to do now is effectively put this into a straight line. A couple more corners and this race is his. Absolutely right. Brilliant, brilliant performance. It has been from Originals, the BMW driver has been faultless really, there's no other way to put it, and this man here, AMS Marzan as well, well he's been pretty quiet, but I tell you what, he's managed to sneak up the order relatively well, and second position at the chequered flag will be very, very rewarding for him, Turismo Defson, as we know, well we were robbed of a last lap showdown between the top two, sadly, due to the man who we're watching now, sadly through all the fault of himself, and a bit of impatience that put pay to his race. Meanwhile, this man here, Originals 14, into Murray's corner for the final time, and out of it now, and over the line, Originals 14 takes victory in the Manufacturer Series for the North America's region. A brilliant performance, a classful win as well. AMS Marzan finishes in second, and Turismo Defson, well, he crashes into the wall. You know, we wanted to uh, bang his head against the wall after this one after a very disappointing end to that race he salvages a third place finish FT and finishes in fourth Mr Sticky Bug completes the top five there as the rest of the field come around Turismo Leicester well a difficult qualifying it was for him and he somehow manages to salvage a top ten finish with eighth position a race really to forget for the Turismo racing team there and you can see very very close further down the order Jimmy as well yeah, great win there for originals in the BMW so it's BMW from Mercedes from Lexus from Convert, from Jaguar, and from what I can see, we have eight different manufacturers in the top eight positions. That's that's what I like to see. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. You can't dispute that the FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships, the manufacturer series, isn't half close, is it? The different manufacturers, the different levels of the drivers is fantastic. So close they have been in terms of performance throughout the entirety of the top 16 superstars season and you can see the race results on your screen there. A brilliant, brilliant win for Originals 14. Great performances up and down the field as well. Lots of different manufacturers involved and this is going to be very interesting to see where they all sit in the point standings really after this one because I tell you what, it is going to be very interesting to see who is going to be lining up where, who has closed up on one another as well. You can see Turismo Defson there, fastest lap with that 201.968.
relatively close in terms of pace to Originals 14 there. So Originals, as we can see, not the fastest man overall, but crucially, Jimmy, the most consistent. Yep, that's what it has to be around here. Death Sun, the momentary lapse in judgment cost him the race. It only takes one at this level. And given, again, the strength of this field, if you're doing mistakes like that, five seconds is not something you can come back from. And I think Def Sun will take that as a learning experience. Yeah, certainly will. There's no two ways about it. It's one of those things that you have to write it off. As he said, he was able to salvage a podium from what could have been otherwise a very, very disappointing experience. So then, let's see what that does to the point standings in the Manufacturer Series for the North America's region. Well, it means that this is the case now. Originals 14 leads the way ahead of Turismo Def Sun. So a change at the top of the order there, Jimmy. That's, and that is about as big a mistake as Def Sun could make if he was wanting to come away first in this, of course. In the grand scheme of things, uh, for the guys in the Manufacturer Series, the important thing is that they stay as the fastest of their manufacturers. So Originals right now would be the person who represented being BMW from the region because he is quicker than TRC Stagger down in fifth position. AMS Marzan as well getting a strong point scoring uh, session from him. That moves him up into eighth and only three points behind Turismo Leicester in seventh. Yeah, Turismo Leicester doing a really good job there as well. He was outside of the top ten. Let's not forget in terms of the standings going into this weekend. So a brilliant, brilliant job it has been for him. You can see a little bit further down the order there. Citroen represented by Road Beef. Mr. Stinky Bug in the... Uh, Jaguar in ninth position there as well. Some work to be done from a few drivers a little bit further down there as well to try and make some ground on their fellow manufacturing competitors. But we'll keep an eye out and see how things go over the course of the remaining top 16 superstars race. Of course, it all is going to be very crucial for the world final in November. Anyway, speaking of top 16 superstars and speaking of the next event, let's have a look and see when that is going to be happening, shall we? Well, it is going to be happening on the 25th of May, the top 16 superstars for the FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. Whatever you do, be sure to tune in for that one because it is going to be an absolute cracker.